Hey everyone, welcome back and welcome to a slightly more casual setup today. Um, I'm talking about my January favorites and I have to admit that January felt like a bit of a black hole for me. I definitely had the January blues, those post-holiday blues, middle of winter blues, and you know, we kind of got a weird start to the new year because of Omicron and we were quarantining. Luckily, we didn't get sick, but we were trying to avoid exposure and all of that. So I feel like it sort of cast a bit of a cloud over the month of January. And so for me, January was a much more pared back month, a bit of a simpler month. And I was just trying to find ways to sustain myself throughout the month. So I think my favorites reflect that. And these are just some bits and pieces that kind of carried me through the month, lifted my spirits here and there. And I do think they did help cheer me up. So I've got a bit of everything for you. I have skincare, hair care, makeup, some fashion bits. And the first thing is skincare. So I have the Medicaid Liquid Peptides. This is a beautiful 30% complex hydrating peptide serum. I love Medicaid. I have shared my love for their retinoids, especially before, but this this is a hydrating, bouncy, gel-like serum that contains peptides. So peptides help support anti-aging. This is a slightly more um, like bouncy texture. It's not scented, it's just super hydrating and comfortable. And you know, in the winter time especially, I really like to layer lots of humectants and hydrating products. And so this has been a really beautiful hydrating step that I know also will support any anti-aging efforts that I'm making. Then I've got the Peach and Lily Glass Skin Veil Mist Hydrate and Glow. Um, I have to be honest, I haven't tried a lot from Peach and Lily, but last month they sent over a few things from the line and I immediately opened this up and I love it. It's a very very fine hydrating mist. It's not too much of anything. Like it's not too lightweight but it's not emollient and the best thing about this is the mist component. It's just extremely fine. I think you can I mean, you probably can't see on screen, but it just gives you a very fine even mist all the way through. And it's not a continuous mist per se, but the mist goes, like one pump goes down for a while. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's just been a pleasure to use. And I think it's actually kind of rare to find a mist that I like for both skincare and makeup. Um, usually I just like one, I like a mist for one purpose or the other, but this works in both ways and I've been using it every day. It's a glass bottle, it's very elegant, and I feel like it helps me stay hydrated and luminous without being greasy. I've also really been enjoying the Mara Universal Face Oil. So Mara is a relatively new brand to me. They sent this over and it contains algae and moringa oil as the base. This is a really beautiful lightweight oil that sinks in and you know, I do slather it on my face. I think at the end of my skincare routines in the evenings, I've been using like four or five drops of this, which is a lot of oil for me. Um, but I think it just creates a really nice, um, I don't know, just like seals in my skincare routine. It feels like my skin is really cocooned, especially on evenings where I'm using actives. I do use tretinoin. The packaging is also really beautiful. It's this gorgeous blue glass and it has this um, green color to the oil. Comes in a little dropper. For me, this is something that's a little bit too heavy for me to use during the day. I um, wouldn't. Um, typically, I don't use oils in my daytime routines, but I have been loving just slathering my face with this basically at the end of the day. Moving into makeup, I did mention that January was a pretty minimal month for me. I spent a lot of time at home. I didn't go out very much. We were just trying to avoid being out as much as we could. Um, so I didn't wear a ton of makeup, but I did wear minimal makeup when I wanted to pick me up. I just wanted a little refresh and I really turned to my M Cosmetics cushion foundation for this. I'm actually wearing it today and I will cut in clips of how I apply it. It's just a beautiful, easy to wear base. It's a light medium coverage. The shade match, um, this is 
sweet secret i think yeah sweet secret is a great shade match for me cushion foundations are just so easy to use because it comes with everything you need you just kind of stamp it on and i like to tap 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 it in i love the shape of the applicator on this and you can wash these the way you wash any sponge or makeup brush and it's just easy i mean honestly i think if i were not a content creator and i weren't doing things on camera or trying out a lot of products i would use this probably most days and you know when i am in my day-to-day -day life this is something i turn to and have turned to a lot especially in the last month then I've got an item that is limited edition, but it is still available as of me filming this, so I want to share it with you. This is the Shuamura X Hello Kitty collection. They sent this over to me specifically. I love this lipstick formula and shade. So this is called Ginger Flash in their Rouge Unlimited Lacquer Shine. So this is a totally new formula to me, um, but it's a very juicy, balmy, shiny lipstick, everything I love, and this shade is especially beautiful. So it looks like that. Obviously you can see it's kind of sheer, but it's buildable. It's not so balmy that it moves around, but it is very moisturizing. And I love that there's this orangey, peachy, like burnt apricot with a drop of red quality. <laughs> to this lipstick. I find it to be very much an everyday wearable lipstick. I'll actually put it on right now. I do have um, a sort of nude lipstick on right now, but I'll just apply it over that. It's an interesting shade because I find that on my lips it reads a bit more as a red, but a juicy red and a quite like complex sort of sophisticated red that is still wearable. And I feel like especially on my skin tone with having golden undertones, it just kind of brings my face to life a little bit. And because the formula is sheer and adjustable, I feel like I can wear it even without wearing a lot of makeup and it's still, it doesn't feel so overpowering. So it is limited edition. That formula, the, what is this called? The Rouge Unlimited Lacquer Shine is in their permanent collection, but I don't think this shade in Ginger Flash is. I wish it were though. Oh, and this is the packaging. It's very cute. Looks like this. I don't know uh, if Shuamura is carried in a lot of retailers anymore. I think I remember hearing that they were pulling out of a few American retailers, but it is available on their website and I'll link it below. Next, I've got two makeup brushes that I just can't get enough of and they're drugstore and affordable. It's amazing. So these are the Real Techniques 241 and 242. I think these came in a limited edition like holiday set, but they're both available individually in the permanent collection. So this is the 241 brush, which is a foundation brush. I think it's called, let me look it up. This is called the Seamless Complexion Makeup Brush, and it's this really unique paddle-shaped brush, and it's pinched, so it's quite thin, but it's cut at an angle, and so it does this really beautiful thing of sort of painting on your foundation, but because it's cut at an angle and it's it's pretty flexible. Um, I find it gives a really nice like sheer application or it's buildable if you want to, but for every day, if you're just lightly painting something on, it gives a much sheer application than a typical paddle brush. Other paddle brushes are generally completely flat and so they give you a really high coverage finish, but because this has this like sort of diffused angular cut to the brushes, it almost works the product into your skin, but also blends away any excess. And of course, it's Real Techniques. It's an amazing price point. These are synthetic brushes, and I think this is like nine bucks. It's amazing, and I've grabbed for it over a lot of my nicer base brushes this month. I also love the 242 brush, which is kind of the sister brush to the 241. So this is the concealer version of the brush I was just talking about, and this is really beautiful. It has a similar thing where it's like pinched. It's cut at a bit of a more dramatic angle and then it has like an angular cut to the bristles this way. So I find that it applies concealer and like 
paints it on and distributes it really well. It just fits in the little like nooks and crannies around my eyes, especially in this little well right here around the under eye. This brush is a, is a bit harder to find, I think, individually, but I have found it at a couple of retailers. I will link it below. I think just these together have been really amazing. And I think especially with base brushes, there's something that you wanna be able to wash often. It's nice to have synthetic versions that aren't quite as sensitive to washing frequently. Um, and of course, at the under $10 price point, you really can't beat that. The last makeup item is from Merit, and this is their mascara. I think it's called their Clean Mascara or something like that. It is their lengthening mascara. There you go. Um, and this is a tubing mascara. So you all know I love tubing mascaras for everyday wear. I just love that they're easy to remove, they're smudge proof, they're um, much kinder to sensitive eyes and to my sensitive eyes. So this one grew on me. I think mascaras, you know, when you first open them, they always tend to be a little bit wetter in formula than they are like two to three weeks into opening a mascara when it's like really at its prime. So the packaging looks like this. It's really beautiful, sleek, as you would expect from Merit. The wand is quite large. It is a natural bristle like wand. It's the same width or diameter all the way through the wand, slightly tapered at the end. I do wish it were slightly smaller, but I think I've gotten used to it as I've used it. So this is definitely a lengthening, sort of separating, fluttery, natural mascara. If you like mascaras, for example, like Glossier, you'll really love this. It has a similar, very natural effect, but it's very delicate and beautiful for every day. It does create a really nice lengthening effect. It's not the strongest at holding a curl for me, but my eyelashes never hold a curl, so so I always pair it with my Peri Para mascara fixer. Um, that's just a given for me. I don't knock the mascara for that necessarily because I do find it builds length really well. It's also a buildable tubing mascara, which most tubing mascaras are not. Once they set down, it's really hard to layer more mascara on top without getting that like spindly spider lash kind of look and this i find actually does build on itself it's not going to give you volume it's not going to give you extreme drama it's not that kind of mascara but what it does is create delicate and beautiful sort of elegant length very well then I've got a couple of indulgent self-care items. So the first is a candle, and this is by Nest. It's their newest scent, and it's called Chamomile, Driftwood and Chamomile. This is so beautiful. I did not know what to expect with this candle scent, but it has a very creamy, warm, vanilla kind of base to it. The notes here are driftwood, chamomile, sandalwood, and vanilla bean. So it does have that, it's like a complex sort of woodsy vanilla. This is part of their wellness collection. So I think the first candle or the first fragrance they added to their wellness collection was their wild mint and eucalyptus, which I also love. This one is definitely a little bit sweeter. It is in the gourmand family, but it's not going to be like a dessert kind of vanilla because it's balanced by those woods. It's the kind of candle that I would light um, during a bath, I would light before bedtime, I would light when I'm trying to kind of calm the senses, I'm looking for something comforting and pleasant, and this is just beautiful. I also love the color of the vessel that they chose. I find this shade of blue to be very serene, and it just makes me happy. There's another candle that I've been enjoying. It's a little bit cheating because I haven't lit it yet, I, but I love the cold throw and it's limited edition, so I really wanna share it. This is the Diptyque Artichoke Candle. Looks like this. Of course, it's beautiful. It's got the Diptyque packaging and this is the vessel. It has this gorgeous artichoke artwork on it. It has an ever so slightly light green tinge. 
and it smells so good. I was really curious about this candle. I had no idea what an artichoke candle would smell like. Here's the diptyque um, description. The artichoke awaits harvesting before its flower opens. Under its green succulent leaves, it reveals a full rounded heart with hints of iris, a vegetal impression with a floral sweetness. And this will be available as of February 8th for a limited time. So I do wanna share it now. I was able to try this early um, via Octoly, but it's just stunning. It's so different from any other candle I have. It does have like almost a white floral quality, but it's not like a powdery floral. It, it, it does have that like green freshness to it. And the cold throw will fill the whole room. I mean, the first time I opened this, I couldn't believe it because my room filled up with this gorgeous fresh scent immediately. And I haven't felt the need to light it, honestly, because I can smell it in the room when I walk in. And the last item is a fancy bath item. This is the True Botanicals Nature Bathing Forest Bath Soak. It is a beautiful glass jar and it's a bath powder that you use two scoops of to pour into the bath. They dissolve and it turns your bath into this most beautiful, like, forest green kind of teal shade. It's magical and it smells amazing. It does evoke a forest and as the powder dissolves, it helps make the water um, a little bit moisturizing. It helps soothe the skin and calm the skin. So this contains lemon eucalyptus, aloe vera, jojoba oil, and it sort of does evoke, it's meant to evoke the Northern California forests, and I do find that's the case. I have a lot of good memories in those forests, and I found this to be really calming and soothing. It's just been a beautiful way to kind of wind down at the end of the evening. It also comes with a little like bamboo scooper. Um, mine is sitting by the bath right now, so I don't have it, but it's a nice touch to have. And if you are someone like me who likes to indulge in a bath, I totally recommend this. It's been such a sensorial pleasure to use. So the last few items are actually fashion items. And so I'm going to cut in shots of me wearing the items so that you can actually see how they look and fit on my body. For reference, I'm just under 5'4". I wear between a 26 and a 27 in pants, generally a size small. So the first item is actually what I'm wearing now. Um, this is the Nap Loungewear Cashmere Set. I think it's called the Ribbed Cashmere Set. So this is a two item set that comes with a sweater as well as ribbed pants and I love it so much that I purchased it in two other shades so I have black and then I have this brown like oatmeal -y color and then I or also ordered it in a kind of warmer deeper brown like a chestnut kind of brown color these have been my uniform, honestly, the last couple of months. It's not the softest cashmere, I'll say, but the price point is so good and Nap Loungewear has sales all the time. And so I think I got this for $196 with 20 or 25% off for two pieces. So for cashmere, I think that's a great price point and I know that the more I wear them, wash them, care for them, the softer they'll get. They're not itchy by any means. Um, they're a rather like thin ribbed material that feels warm without adding a lot of bulk. And this loungewear set, when worn together, it makes me feel so cozy but still put together. Put together enough that I've gone out to run errands in them and I've gotten a lot of compliments. People have asked me where I got the outfit because it's just the kind of thing that feels so nice to wear like on a weekend or if you're working at home but you still wanna feel put together. The other item that I've really loved have been my redone jeans. I just got my hands on the redone 70s stovepipe jeans in the comfort stretch version. I've heard people talk about the stovepipe jeans forever and how much they love them, how comfortable they are, how great the quality is. Redone jeans, I think at full price, um, are around $250, and I just could never justify the price point until I saw these pop up on the outside net for 50% off. So they were about $125 and I grabbed 
um, a faded black pair first and I loved them so much. Denim shopping is one of my least favorite things to do. I think I speak for a lot of us when I say it's a it's a rather joyless pursuit, but it's the kind of thing I wear all the time, so you have to just do it sometimes. And I have decided that it's worth investing in nicer denim if it means that they're a little bit more timeless, they're going to get me through several years and dozens and dozens of wears. So I am so glad I took the plunge on these. They are perfect, especially if you have a smaller waist and thicker thighs. They're high-waisted, they're a straight leg, and I think they're a 27-inch inseam, which on me is basically my full leg length. So even though that might be cropped to a lot of people, a uh, shorter inseam is actually full length on me because I'm not that tall. I love that this shape sort of elongates the leg. It's a straight leg and it's wide enough for me to wear um, like ankle boots and have the pant come over the boot without any bulkiness. So the first pair I bought of these in the faded black, I got a size 26 and they are, they fit just right. Like if I gain weight, these probably won't fit, but because they have that comfort stretch feel, I think it's like 1% elastane, they actually mold to the body really well. And I would say these are about a mid-weight denim. They're really, really soft. They feel like they're already worn in. And so they're just, they kind of feel like a hug to put on and they move with the body really, really well. So I liked them so much that I purchased them in a mid-tone blue wash. So I got the blue jeans in a size 27 and they fit me beautifully. They're more of like a comfortable fit, I would say. If you're between sizes, I would say size up. Because these do have that bit of stretch, they're also, again, really comfortable. I just think the 27 has a little bit more give through the hips and through the crotch. So if I'm like sitting down or I'm driving or something, I don't feel quite as much stretch. They are a button fly, which I like. I know some people don't. I'm just putting that out there. I do think with the size 27, they do not feel as snug around my waist. So if I wanted a more secure feel, I could just belt it and that would be fine. Um, but they're not big on me by any means. They're just a little bit um, stretchier, a little bit, they have a little bit more movement than the 26, but both fit me really well. I have to say the stovepipe jean, if you're like me, if you have a body type like mine, I just, I totally recommend them. The quality feels amazing and I can just tell they're going to last me a really long time and they're kind of a timeless style. They're not skinny jeans, they're not super wide leg, they're just the perfect straight leg cut. Another winter wear piece that I've really been enjoying is the And Other Stories half zip sweater. I have mine in the black and brown colorway, which I find to be really cozy and warm and inviting for winter. I really wanted to pick this up in the black and white, but it was sold out in my size. I did size up in this for a medium. I do think this size small would have fit perfectly because it is so oversized. I find the sleeves on the medium go over my hands, but I actually wanted a really oversized fit. I wanted it to come down a little bit lower and cover my butt. I do find it to be a little bit more heavyweight than I expected in a good way, in the sense that the material and the weave is a bit of a thicker weave. And so it does feel like a great layering piece for me in Southern California, that's kind of really all I need um, if I'm going out, but you could wear an oversized coat on top of this and I think it would look really chic. You can obviously layer up underneath, so it's very versatile. And lastly, I want to mention my new purse, the Osoy bag. And this is the Peanut Brute bag. Um, it's called different things on different websites, but it's the bigger version. They have two sizes of this bag and it's the bigger size of the bag. So this is a beautiful black leather crossbody bag that um, is designed to be worn crossbody, but it can also be worn slung over the shoulder. And it immediately caught my eye because of the sculptural element to it. It has this open and close clasp and it's a quite structured bag. I've been on the hunt for the perfect black 
crossbody bag that would be minimal, slightly sculptural, something that would go with every kind of outfit. I really like a crossbody bag, um, but I wanted something that would also feel a little bit flexible with different kinds of outfits. So when I saw this, I immediately felt like, oh, that's the one. You know, it's a black leather bag, but it has a bit of interest and a bit of, I don't know, like artistry to it. The leather quality is incredible. It is a smooth leather, but it's not the kind of leather that scratches really easily. Other smooth leather bags I have are almost so buttery that they scratch the second they catch on anything. This is quite a firm leather, so I don't think that's going to happen. I also love the thick strap. I love the big buckle, and I love the hardware on it. It's kind of this like burnished gold, antique gold color. And Osoi is a Korean brand, so I was really excited to find a Korean brand that I could love and support. They do a lot of really interesting bags. This is definitely the most minimal and I feel like the most maybe timeless of the bags that they have, but I'm definitely keeping my eye on them. So it is an investment and it's not a small expense for me, but I'm someone who wears basics over and over and over and over again, especially when it comes to purses. I just don't like switching them out that much, um, purely because I'm lazy. So I was excited to find something at a price point that I could live with that still felt like an investment in a quality piece, and it has lived up to all of my hopes and expectations. So um, yeah, if you want a deeper review on that bag, let me know. I'm happy to go more in depth and talk about what it carries. It does carry quite a bit. And I will say that the latch of the bag, which is one point I was a little bit nervous about, um, is very secure. It's very well made. I'm not worried that it's going to break. So that's that. So that's everything from me today. Those were all of my January favorites. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that February is a better month for me and for you if you also had a rough January. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!